on June 13th, that's today, um, there was a bipartisan bill raised by Senator Marco Rubio and Senator Bob Menendez to basically requires the Secretary of State to issue an annual certification on whether Hong Kong is still autonomous enough to justify the special treatment. Do you think this bill will be passed? Well, I think most likely if the extradition law passes, the bill will be passed, and I think that would be extremely harmful to um, People's Republic of China and the Chinese Communist Party because, quite frankly, Hong Kong uh, for China is uh, the window to the West, and that uh, special treatment that Hong Kong receives because of the one country, two systems policy allows them to have access to Western capital markets. In fact, um, Hong Kong is not subject to the tariffs that are currently um, on the mainland. So a lot of the things, the benefits that the People's Republic of China gets from having Hong Kong be the window to the West because of one country, two systems, those will be taken away and it will be enormously damaging, I think, to the Chinese economy. Mm -hmm. Um, this is part of the U.S. Hong Kong Policy Act. Do you think this act should be revoked under any circumstance? Absolutely. I think it should be revoked if this extradition law passes. Look, um, the fact that uh, Carrie Lam or any other uh, leader in Hong Kong has to go through a vetting process by the Chinese Communist Party before it can actually be put on the ballot for the people of Hong Kong to elect indicates that they don't have the right to have one country, two systems. In essence, their political system is being controlled by the Chinese Communist Party. The Global Magnitsky Act has been applied to Russians and, and officials from other countries, but has never been applied to Hong Kong officials. And uh, there's a petition going around that asked um, this uh, act to be applied to Hong Kong officials as well if they support the extradition law and uh, have violated human rights. What do you think? Well, I think the Global Magnitsky Act was meant to deal with violators of human rights. And, um, and I think that going forward, we ought to take a much broader view of who that applies to. So certainly, if the extradition law results in the arbitrary, capricious, and without due process detention and extradition of people in Hong Kong, or perhaps even, um, you know, international travelers that transit Hong Kong and that are then essentially sequestered by the Chinese Communist Party back to the mainland. That's extremely troubling and certainly should be um, considered. Hmm. Do you think Hong Kong could be a fuse that would lit the fire that could burn down the Chinese Communist regime? I think um, the fuse has already been lit. And it really has to do with the, the way that Chinese Communist Party uses their system of economic, financial, and informational control to essentially erode freedoms, not just in China, but also outside of China. And I think that, um, that behavior, that method of using globalization and the Internet, has, has awakened uh, in, in, in the West a realization that through our daily interactions with the Chinese Communist Party, not only uh, are we contributing to really the economic demise of many Americans here in the United States, but also um, a slow erosion of our own freedoms as you know, people like Roy Jones, who worked for the Marriott Corporation, find themselves fired for liking a tweet about Tibet uh, without even understanding why Marriott Corporation would fire him. Mm -hmm. Can you walk us through maybe this process, for example, um, in terms of U.S.-China trade war, if this extradition law was passed, what would happen to Hong Kong and what would happen to the U.S.-China trade war? Yeah, I don't know um, specifically what might happen, but if um, that special relationship is taken away from Hong Kong, it will be extremely damaging for the uh, Hong Kong economy, but also for the Chinese economy because, it, again, it relies on Hong Kong as a window to the West. That um, promise, really, by the Chinese Communist Party to have uh, and to honor one country, two systems is what we're talking about now. 
Chinese Communist Party makes a lot of promises and um, has gone back on nearly all of them. Uh, so it's not surprising that they would change their um, behavior with regard to Hong Kong. But the problem is, is if we look the other way, then we essentially sanction the things that they do, do that are counter to our own principles. Do you think the American government will stand solidly with the Hong Kongers and support them? I believe they will. I believe that um, Secretary Pompeo has already made a statement, I believe. Um, I think that uh, you're going to see um, not just from the administration, but also the Congress and just people, um, not just in America, in democracies everywhere, when they see the peaceful people of Hong Kong subjected to essentially the same rules that are applied to the people in mainland China, I think this is just going to be beyond the pale for democracies everywhere. China, the Chinese Communist Party has been able to hide most of what they do because of how they organize their society within the mainland China. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult right now for them to hide what they're doing to Hong Kong because they still have a sem semblance of freedoms with free press. If the, so what's going on now is going to be quite visible to the world. And so I don't think, um, I don't think the world is going to look away if we have another Tiananmen Square. Mm -hmm. More specifically, what would U.S. do? Well, I think um, you're going to see a continued decoupling of uh, the economic, financial, and trade relationship. With Hong Kong. With, with Hong Kong and, and the, and the um, PRC.